What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So before we get into the show, I just want to thank you guys for making my Redemption Review video the most watched video on our YouTube page. Um, over 2,000 views, uh, like 6,000 watch minutes. Uh, just really appreciate it. Um, it's funny because when you look back, what was it, about six months ago when we had the Bound for Glory pay-per-view, I think my video only did 200 views. And now to go from 200 to 2,000, I think that's just a good indicator that the company is uh, becoming a lot more popular, and it's good to see. Um, so, on to the show. I thought Impact was really good t this week. Um, I felt like they, uh, they've just kind of continued to do the same thing that they did the last set of tapings, but things seemed a little more complete, more polished. Um, it it's really an easy watch. Like, I actually watched this week's show twice. Um, Thursday night, I did it and took notes, and by the time it was done, I was just exhausted and was not up to doing a review, so that's why I'm doing it now, Sunday morning. Um, but I also watched it last night without taking notes and anything like that, and it's just really enjoyable. It's an easy watch. It doesn't feel like I'm sitting there for two hours wasting my time when I'm done. It, it's just a nice, nice feeling, much different than it being a chore like sometimes, you know, these things can be. Um, so we open the show with an Austin Aries town meeting. Uh, he says he isn't making any excuses about losing the title, and he wants to ensure everyone that everything is going to be all right because, well, the company was in terrible shape before he came and he was champion. He says, I have a reserve, though, and he holds up the grand championship and says this is now the most important championship in the company because I hold it. Um, he says he wasn't going to make any excuses, or I should say, he said if he was going to make any excuses, he would talk about facing two men, ones that aren't even in the company, they don't even speak the same language, and they're brothers. And at this point, Moose kind of looks at him and goes, sounds like you are making excuses. And then uh, Aries said, you know, make it like the, on the football field and just do your job to protect the star quarterback. And at this point, Moose gets up and just goes, you can go screw yourself, and then walks off, and then everybody else leaves. So this was a good opening segment. I really like um, Austin Aries' character here, kind of on the fence between a good guy and bad guy, which I think him as a tweener is probably his best character. So good stuff here. Then we open the show with our first match of the night, and this was Trevor Lee versus Brian Cage. Now, the first time I watched this, I was like, yeah, this was pretty much a Brian Cage squash match. And then when I watched back, it was like, wow, Trevor Lee got a lot more offense in than I had expected. And that's good to see because you don't want to squash some of your up-and-coming talent. Um, and I think Trevor Lee is a very, very talented individual. And I think I, I would like to see him do more on the show. Um, obviously, Caleb Conley was ringside, so he would get his shots in here and there, which obviously gave Trevor Lee an advantage. But... It was not enough to overcome the machine, and Brian Cage eventually wins with the drill claw. So, before this match happened, we uh, learned that we got Don Callis and Josh Matthews on commentary again. Now, I don't want to take anything away from Sanjay, but I, this team just felt, it just felt right. Like, I feel like it, it was more natural. When Sanjay and Josh Matthews were commentating together, it kind of felt like, two buddies that were just commentating on wrestling rather than, you know, a duo that seems polished and I don't want to say more professional because that's that's not a fair thing to say, but it, it, it just felt like more of a professional product. And that's not to take away from Sanjay's abilities because I did enjoy him on commentary, but like I said, I feel like Callis and Matthews worked better and it seemed like Josh Matthews almost was kind of put in his place he, he is now, I guess you could say, the babyface announcer while Callis being the heel. Um, but no, if, if this is the route they're going, I am perfectly fine with it. I think they worked well. Um, so up next, we have uh, Eddie Edwards seen outside of the impact zone, and he's walking toward the building, and Tommy Dreamer stops him and goes, What are you doing? Go to your wife. She's in the hospital. And, he, and she needs you there. And he's like, no, I need to be here. OVE is here, and I'm going to put them in the hospital. So then we go back to inside the impact zone, and we actually see Josh Matthews and Don Callis sitting at a commentator's table, which is something we didn't get the last set of tapings simply because everything was recorded afterward. Um, I'm sure they did this during the week because it was actually funny because uh, 
um, they you start to hear Eddie Edwards' music, and they all of a sudden turn to look at the uh, the Tron, and you see Eddie come out at this point, but you can clearly see that there's no commentators table next to the Tron when he makes his entrance. So uh, it, it was just something I was nitpicking, but. The fact that we got to see them rather than Josh and Sanjay in the virtual studio, I, I like this here. And uh, if that's just how they're going to do it, that's perfectly fine with me. So Eddie Edwards comes out and he says that he put Callahan in the hospital where he belongs. Uh, but his job isn't done because OVE isn't in the hospital. And he says if they don't come out, he's going to drive down to Dayton, Ohio and attack his wives and put them both in the ICU. And I was like, whoa. This is a little bit of a different Eddie Edwards than we're used to. So, obviously, this brings OVE out. Uh, Eddie jumps through the ropes. It starts attacking him. Eventually, a numbers game becomes too much, but Eddie's actually able to slip out of the ring, and I think he grabbed a kendo. It was grabbing a kendo stick at this point from underneath the ring. And then we see a video up on the Titantron, and uh, we see a guy in a wheelchair roll into uh, Alicia's hospital room, and... Alicia's obviously dazed and confused, and the man in the wheelchair has some balloons in front of him, and he pulls out scissors, and he cuts the balloons, they float away, and all of a sudden, it's Sammy Callahan, and she's like, well, what are you doing here? Get out of here, and he's like, I, I, I just want to talk, so at this point, Eddie realizes who it is, and he goes running up the ramp and out, and man, the storytelling here is fantastic. Every week, they're just doing something new. Um, if th This is definitely material for feud of the year and i mean it just continues throughout the show but just everything they're doing is so good taking an accident that was terrible and just making it into something really really shows that they're doing the right thing here so up next we have a oh a global Res wrestling network flashback um this was the Steiners versus Dudleys in a table match. They had a good transition into it because they, I think they were talking about the tag title match from Redemption at this point. Um, but, man, this went on forever. So, again, a gripe. And I don't know how many people actually complained about this on the survey, but really, really, they just need to shorten it up. That's it. That's it. Then we get a DJZ video package, um, his road to recovery, basically, and him being back in Impact a year later. And then we learn next week he'll be a part of a six-man tag with him, Andrew Everett, and Desmond Xavier versus Drago, Aerostar, and I believe Phantasma. So it's good to see him back in the Impact zone. So up next we have Moose versus Braxton Sutter. Um, this is pretty much a squash match for Moose. Uh, Braxton got a little bit of offense in here and there, but... Um, so before the match starts, uh, Braxton grabs the microphone and goes to cut a promo, but he is immediately interrupted by Moose. Moose comes out, and Don Callis notices that his vest is Mr. Impact Wrestling, and this kind of rubbed him the wrong way, it seemed, and he's like, you know, if this guy wants to be Mr. Impact Wrestling, he really needs to prove it, and I was like, all right, so this, this is good. Um, Moose wins with a spear. Uh, and then after the match, he grabs the microphone and congratulates Pentagon on becoming the new champion and says that you may be the Impact World Champion, but I'm Mr. Impact Wrestling. And he says he's going to be the person to take the title from him. So it seems like Moose has some direction where he wants to move. Let's see if that actually happens. So we go backstage and McKenzie is interviewing Matt Seidel. Um, he talks about his third eye being open and he tells McKenzie to open hers and uh, that no one has taken the title from him. And then he hypes his match with Taiji Ishimori next week, which should be a great match. I believe the two have wrestled recently as well, and they put on a good match. But uh, at this point, we hear a bunch of commotion, and the camera goes over to a guy laying on the ground. He's got a red piece of paper on top of him with a circle and an X on it, and that's all we really need, all we really know, actually. So who knows who that is? Um, wondering if this is going to happen for a few weeks, and we'll eventually figure out who it is. So, we'll see. So, up next, we have Santana and Ortiz in the clubhouse, kind of trying to figure out what to do next. This is a really good segment. Um, I feel like we're getting to know the LAX characters a little more. Anyway, Santana and Ortiz, considering they're on their own at this point without Conan there. Um, San Santana's freaking out the most, saying he can't concentrate on the titles because they're losing contact with everyone. Homicide down in Mexico, and Conan getting beat up, and... Uh, then Ortiz is kind of calming him down. He's like, all right, all right, hold on. Here's what we're going to do. 
Step one, get the titles back. Step two, figure everything else out. So they want to get the titles back, and uh, they're going to try later on in the evening against Scott Steiner and Eli Drake, but uh, this, it just I, I like that they're building up LAX a little more, something different, get them away from the titles, I guess, yeah, because they did not win them later on in the evening, so... Um, We'll see. We'll see where this goes. I'm interested because I do enjoy LAX. I think they're a very strong team, and they've pretty much been in the title picture the majority of the time they've been in Impact. So let's get a little bit of a different look at them. So up next, we have a, a knockout championship match with Ali defending against Taya. Um, this match didn't get much time. It was probably only three or four minutes long, but I mean... For that little time given, they put on a good match. I mean, it was a good amount of back-and-forth action. Nobody looked weak. Um, very even. Uh, Taya goes to set up for the road to Valhalla. Allie's able to counter. They go back and forth, uh, countering moves. Allie eventually hits the best super kick ever. I think that's what she calls it. And then the code breaker for the win. So after the match, this, is, this was a fantastic segment. We see uh, a whole bunch of undead bridesmaids bringing out a coffin. Music goes, you know, lights go black and awesome music playing. So they come out, they drop the coffin off, they start to head back up. Lights go out, a couple seconds, lights come back on. Sue Young's in the middle of the ring. She attacks Allie, hits her with a uh, draping pedigree. She goes, I think she started to go bring her over to the coffin. All of a sudden, the lights go, go out again. Lights come back on. Now Rosemary and Sue Young are faced off in the ring together, and this this is what we've been waiting for. I was a little surprised that they jumped into it right away, but I'm completely fine because, like I said, this is what we were all looking forward to. Um, lights go out again. Sue Young disappears. It's just Rosemary, so she goes and checks on Allie, and what what a, what a great great segment without technically doing anything because. I mean, if we get a casket match between Sue Young and Rosemary down the line, that, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, maybe even a four-way casket match between the four women. Who knows? Um, but like I said, I, I wanted to see Taya and Allie kind of feud a little more. I don't know if that's going to happen because, you know, she lost her knockouts championship match, which I'm sure was given to her for her victory at Redemption. Um, but later on, it's announced in the evening that... We will get Sue Young versus Rosemary next week, so I'm sure that match will be, you know, one of the matches where it ends in DQ or something like that to just prolong the story, kind of give us a bit of a taste and then pull it back from us, you know, what they should be doing. So we go backstage and follow, we see Falaba, and he's kind of just standing there thinking about things, and all of a sudden we see KM walk up to him, and he's like, you know, there's a lot of things I've done that I don't regret, but one thing I do regret is fat shaming you. He says, it's okay to be fat. And he's like, I want to stand by, I want to stand with you side by side. And Fall Ball's like, no, no, no. And KM says, he's changed his ways. And KM says, next week they have a tag match and he's going to prove that he's changed. Now, I don't want to call KM a liar, but I don't know. It's a little interesting to flip the character around like this. So it, it should be interesting. Um, it's good they're giving both these men something to do because I, a lot of fans do enjoy both of their works. And so, you know, it's only only fitting to keep them in a lower card role um so then up next we see eddie edwards running through the hospital hallways he gets to alicia's room looking for sammy he's flipping out asking why she would talk to him and at this point she goes why would you leave me here and i was like oh man that was perfect what a burn so obviously eddie has just gone insane he's just sees rage no logical thinking so he's he has to find Callahan now. So he runs out. He's like kind of asking doctors, grabs a clipboard from him, looking through the rooms. Um, so all of a sudden he finds Callahan's room, and Callahan's just kind of laying there, just basically dead to the world. Eddie runs in the room, jumps on top of him, starts beating him up, knocks him knocks him off the bed onto the ground. Doctors come running, and they go, well, what are you doing? He's a patient. The police are here. And all of a sudden we see Eddie run out. So again, fantastic segment. And it's great to see now Eddie's just blind with rage. So it's kind of, it's it's just funny how they've kind of flipped roles a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, this should be uh, interesting to see where they're going from here. I hope we do get that one-on-one -on -one match between the two of them at Slammiversary. I think that would be the stage to do it. So 
And we get a recap of the Congo Kong versus Johnny Impact feud that's been going on the last couple weeks. Nothing this week, just the recap. Um, but it's basically, you know, say, uh, don't forget, we still have stuff that's unfinished that happened before Redemption. And that brings us to the main event. Eli Drake and Scott Steiner defending their newly won tag titles against LAX. So, of course, Scott Steiner gets on the microphone before the match. He says he told everybody they were going to win the titles, and they did. Then he makes fun of the crowd, as usual, and he says that he was trending number six worldwide on Sunday. He did say yesterday, because I guess this was taped on Monday. Um, obviously, he goes on to say he's world famous, bitch. And then he says, yeah, but people are more concerned about that dumbass Conan, or whatever he said. And then Steiner says, there was a discount at Taco Bell, and we see where his priorities lie. And it was just like, oh my god, this guy. Oh man. Um, the match was decent, though. Um, good back and forth action to start off the match. Uh, Steiner and Drake were able to isolate Santana. Uh, Steiner was able to hit an overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex, or overhead suplex, whatever you want to call it, from the top rope. Ortiz got the hot tag. They were in control. Steiner gets knocked to the outside. LAX sets up for the street sweeper. And at this point, Drake was on top of Ortiz's shoulders. Santana was on the turnbuckle. Santana goes to jump at Eli. Eli grabs him and power slams him down. All three men hit the ground. Uh, Steiner kind of holds Ortiz. And Eli Drake pins Santana for the win. And they retain the tag titles. Um... And we found out during the match that Eddie Edwards had been arrested, so that adds more to the storyline. Um, and then after the match, Eli Drake cuts a promo, and he says these titles aren't going anywhere. Uh, he says he still has the briefcase and, can get briefcase and can cash it in anytime he wants, so he's putting everyone on notice that thinks they're going to be carrying that title soon. Austin Aries comes out. He says that the Grand Championship is the most important title in the company now because he holds it. He says Eli can cash in on a sh shot for that, but we all knows what, know what happens when the two of them in the ring together. And then Eli is just kind of like, you know what? I wish, wish you the best of luck, Aries. He says, be when you finally get that world title shot, you can come looking for me because I'll be the one holding the title. So this brings Pentagon Jr. out. He says a few things to Aries, I mean to, uh, to Eli. Eli kind of pushes him, attacks Aries. Then Pentagon attacks Steiner. He gets thrown out of the ring, and then Pentagon throws Eli out of the ring. And at this point, uh, Ares and Pentagon have a little struggle with the Impact World Championship, and then both men hold up titles to each other. So that was the end of the show. Um, and all, like I said, it was a good show overall, an easy watch, which is very nice. It doesn't feel like you're sitting there for hours and hours and hours. Um but yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. Um, unfortunately, the ratings were down this week. Uh, they only drew 308,000 viewers and ranked uh, 118 on Cable's Top 150. This was mainly due to the NFL draft, so kind of tough to go up against a, something that has 7 or 8 that, uh, million viewers. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, still not under that 300,000 mark, so that is good. Um, and then I think it was... Friday, uh, or it might have even been Thursday night after Impact, we learned that uh, Braxton Sutter has announced his departure from Impact Wrestling. Um, I mean, not not really a huge surprise here. Th they really weren't doing with doing anything with Braxton Sutter. I don't think he made an appearance on the Canada tapings from Bound for Glory all the way through uh, to the next set of tapings. I mean, he, he did a decent amount then, because I think he let, looked for his release the last set of tapings and was granted it after this past set, but it is crappy because I, I liked Braxton Sutter. I thought he was a good character, but again, you got to do what you got to do. He uh, took to Twitter and wrote, my time at Impact Wrestling is up, and I would like to extend a huge thank you to them. They gave me my first official contract slash job as a wrestler at 35 years old and hired my wife at the same time. I'll never forget that. It was a great chapter in my life. On to the next one. So, Seems like he left on good terms, at least. Um, I think the Young Bucks commented on Come to Ring of Honor or something like that. So we'll see where it takes his wrestling career. Um, wish nothing but the best for him. But, uh, yeah. So one thing that I did hear about earlier in the week was that rumors started coming around that Alberto 
<clears throat> Alberto El Patron was supposed to win the world title at Redemption from Austin Aries. You know, when bad things happen and it, you know, kind of screws everything up, sometimes we have a better outcome. This was definitely one of them. I know the Impact Zone did enjoy Alberto because he always seemed to get a decent reception there. But I think that just would have left a terrible taste in my mouth, along, along with a lot of other people. Um, and it would just would have wouldn't have added the buzz that Pentagon and Phoenix added to the main event. Um, this is like uh, when WWE had that outbreak of the mumps, and we never got Finn Balor versus uh, Bray Wyatt, and it turned into Finn Balor versus AJ Styles, and it was just like, wow, completely different changes, but... Very glad that did not happen. I'm interested to see where Pentagon goes with this. I mean, with him and Austin Aries, maybe they're going to do a title versus title match since Impact seem to be on, been on a kick with that lately. Um, I have not read any of the spoilers, so I don't know anything that happens, which I'm very glad that they weren't blatantly posted this time around, like last time when Aries won the title and it was just plastered everywhere and the new people coming in and title changes, like... It, it was just, it was bad, but this set of tapings, things have changed a little bit. I'm glad to see that. Um, yeah, we're just co constantly moving in the right direction, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. Like I said, I really started doing this review back in August of last year to, because I was a little burnt out on WWE. I kind of wanted to see what other promotions had to offer, and, uh, you know, because everybody was just constantly shitting on Impact and I figured, you know, give them a shot. Let's see what they can do. And the fact that in eight months of watching this, or ten months, no, eight months of watching it, that everything has turned around drastically. So it's great to be on this roller coaster of a ride. But that is all I have for you guys this week. So I will catch you hopefully Thursday for my impact review. And until next time, as always, thanks for checking out my video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.